Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss 4-H feeding strategies with emphasis on haylage systems. Let's again begin by looking at the characteristics of haylage. This would include alfalfa or legumes and grasses and combinations of those feeds. The dry matter content of haylages will vary from 35 to 65 percent, primarily determined by storage structure, although weather will have impact as well. Generally speaking, the wetter silages, in this case haylages, 35 to 40 percent dry matter, will be in bags, piles, bunkers, and for making haylage. Primarily, we need the moisture there to get good compaction because these are not as tightly packed as you find in upright silos. If you go to conventional upright storage units, 45 to 55 percent dry matter would be a good range to be. And if you're in oxygen limiting structures, a bit drier, 50 to 65 percent. Remember, though, the drier the crop is, the more fuel losses that will be occurring. Fermentation may require one to two weeks to be complete. However, if oxygen cannot be excluded, expect longer heat up times. A stable pH would be from four to five once the entire fermentation process has completed. And again, moisture content will tend to drive it lower. Drier will tend to be higher. Advantages of haylages include an acidic forage, which makes it well preserved and increases palatability. Cows like acid feed. Another advantage is that we can get an optimal particle size to get good rumen digestion and hay mat formation. We recommend using the Penn State box. Current guidelines for the Penn State box for haylages would include 20% or greater on the top screen, approximately 40% or greater than 40% in the middle screen, and less than 40% on the bottom screen. We argue the top two screens contribute to the functional fiber component of a haylage type feed. If you are going to set your chopper, this may be at a one half inch theoretical length of chop, and you may obtain these particle sizes mentioned earlier. But choppers will vary, as does power on the chopper and the number of knives. So you better take the Penn State box and double check. One big advantage of haylage based systems is it fits very nicely in a total mix ration system. The feeds already have been processed shorter, so they mix very uniformly and very quickly, and we can rapidly fill our total mix ration system, especially from some of our bags and bunker storage units. We also expect a higher quality forage because there is one less day of drying time. In fact, our weather forecasting is accurate enough that we can almost predict when those windows will be for making high quality haylage. Plus, we can chop all night. Once the dew comes in, the moisture content will stay very stable, and we can chop for 6 or 8 or 10 hours at night and not change in terms of quality or in dry matter. And we expect a higher dry matter intake because of its higher quality and a little higher passage rate because of its shorter particle size. And finally, our cows should not sort it as much because it's a shorter particle size and it should be a more palatable and higher quality feed. Of course, there are some disadvantages. Again, we can experience some losses of quality and quantity due to fuel losses, which can vary from 5 to 15 percent. We also can have higher storage losses because of the fermentation, especially if the feed is too dry, too mature, and we start getting heat damage. So these losses in storage can exceed 10 percent. The good news is feed losses normally are lower because cows do not throw the feed or selectively consume it. So our feeding losses should be down in the 5 to 7 to 10 percent range. However, another disadvantage is that we have more expensive equipment in terms of harvesting, requiring some type of a chopper, specialized collection wagons, blowers, packing tractors, and other equipment depending on the storage unit I'm going to have. So it's a fairly high investment requiring larger herd sizes to justify this cost. Of course, as we are moving more forages, we may need more labor, especially during the harvest window because we need to be able to chop it, transport it, and then process it into the storage unit. Remember with baled hay, I can roll it up in round bales and it's a one person operation potentially. Another one factor to consider is removal rates. Generally we want to take during cold weather somewhere two to four inches off the surface of the bunker, bag, or storage unit, and four to six inches in warmer weather. So therefore, some cases, removal rates may exceed what the cows can actually consume and we start losing forage quality. Another aspect with baleage is that it's difficult to control intake. 
because we don't have good equipment to process bailage units effectively. Therefore, it's many times a free choice system, and if it's good quality bailage, cows like it like candy and will leave the TMR and other feed sources just to eat bailage, resulting in a very healthy diet, but lower nutrient intake and lost milk production. And finally, if I have too much haylage, it is difficult to sell and transport because of its moisture content and its stability. Now let's talk about some managed considerations. Some of these will overlap the hay modules that we'll also discuss. Again, I need the five pounds of long fiber, which means I need to have at least five pounds of dry matter, or it'd be roughly 10 pounds as fed, that's gonna be an inch in length or longer. That's why we need 20% in the top part of the Penn State box. We also know that we'll have higher levels of rumen degradable and soluble protein. If we do not capture this properly, this will increase MUN levels, which means we lose the nutrient and may have a problem with reproduction and complicates our ration balancing procedure. Again, the higher the moisture, the higher levels of rumen degradable protein that will occur. In some cases, a straight haylage based diet becomes almost impossible to balance out for MUN and BUN values. Next, we have to certainly monitor particle size during the entire harvesting process, both during the ensiling and the removal processes, and also in the mixer, because our units can chop it down. So really monitor these various phases, again, with your Penn State box. Also be aware that bagging can reduce particle size. One Illinois nutritionist suggests about equivalent of a quarter inch theoretical length of chop reduction compared to an unbagged product. Another management consideration is to use a research-based inoculant to direct the fermentation. Next, we do not recommend transferring haylage from one storage unit to another because it's fairly low in acid content and it can result in a secondary fermentation. If you're going to do this, you want to do it in the very cold time of the year and do it very, very quickly because of the risk associated with it. As with any legume grass system, the harvest window is modestly short, and you must manage this to have enough equipment and personnel to try to harvest the entire crop in five to seven periods to maintain a high relative feed value. Again, as we saw with the hay system, dropping four to seven units per day. Next, we think the haylage-based system will fit very well with larger herd sizes because of the cost of the equipment and the need to feed fairly high amounts off the face of the storage structure. I would argue herd size has to exceed at least 75 cows, and some people say 150 cows. And finally, we should take a look at the volatile fatty acid profile of the haylage. In this last slide, we can see what a good haylage, legume grass haylage, should look like. The dry matter should vary from 35 to 50 percent. The pH should vary from 4.3 to 4.7. It can go below 4 if it's extremely wet, and if it goes over 5, be careful, we might see an undesirable fermentation. The lactic acid content, this is what really pickles the feed, should be somewhere from 4 to 6 percent of the total ranch and dry matter. Acetic acid content, somewhere between a half and 2.5 percent. The acetic acid improves the bunk life when the feed is removed from storage. Propionic acid levels less than 0.25 percent, butyric acid less than 0.25, and butyric acid is a marker VFA. When this gets over 0.5%, it may indicate an undesirable fermentation, and you might see some clostridium occurring. This can be very lethal to the cow at really high levels and occurs in those haylages that are excessively wet and had a lot of rain damage. Ethanol content, not a major problem with alfalfa or legumes and grasses, less than 1%. The next one, monitor this one. Ammonia nitrogen of the total crude protein should be less than 12%. When this number gets over 12 to 15 percent, it indicates excessive degradation of the protein and the product was not put in too wet or inoculant could really help us out. Here are your two important numbers. The ratio of a lactic acid to acetic acid should be greater than 2.5 to 1. So you can see above up here, if I had 5 percent lactic acid and 2 percent acetic acid, I would have greater than 2.5 or exactly 2.5. Again, the lactic acid content should be at least 70% of the total. So this is another quality measure to determine not only did we harvest it at the right time, but to get the right fermentation occurring in the storage structure I have on the farm. Well, that completes our module on haylage type
feeding system. Thanks and have a good day.